This is question 16 from the second paper of the 2017 exam. So this question starts off with a very bold statement that if f of x is an integer for every integer input x, then f prime of x, the derivative, also has to be an integer for every integer x. And our mathematical intuition should immediately tell us that this statement is, you know, it's too daring, too, too much, too, too general uh, to be true. And it shouldn't co come to us as a surprise that they want us to find a counterexample to this statement, which is f definitely false. There will be some special functions, like um, f of x equals x, which do comply with this theorem. If the input is an integer, then the output will also be an integer, well, the same number. And the derivative of prime of x, in this case, is just 1. And that's the same for every input. So this, this function, in fact, has an integer value for every input x. But this is a very special function, and there'll be lots which, which violate uh, the theorem. And we are supposed to pick one of these four which are a good, or which is a good counterexample to uh, this sentence here. So let's first think about, generally speaking, what a good counterexample to an if statement will be. So let's take the statement, if you wear a jacket, you won't be cold. What would be a good counterexample to that? Well, I could say that even though the first condition was satisfied, what follows still didn't happen. So for instance, I could say, you know what, today, even though I wore my jacket, I was still cold. So your rule that if you wear a jacket, you won't be cold is not true. That's a false statement. So in our case, we are looking for a function f of x, which is an integer for every integer x, but its derivative is not an integer for every integer x. So the condition is satisfied, but the outcome is negative. And that rules out the first two functions immediately. Because, for example, for f of 1, we get 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 4. That's 3 quarters. So it's not true that this function is an integer for every integer. And the exact same thing uh, happens in b. So a and b are not good counterexamples uh, to our statement. How about c? Well, imagine x is odd. If x is odd, then all of its powers will be odd. And so we get an odd number plus an odd number plus an odd number and a fourth odd number. But two odd numbers combine to make an even number. And even plus even is again even. And an even number divided by two is always an integer. That's the definition of, uh, of an even number, even. <laughs> And should x be even, we just get the sum of four even numbers, which trivially is even, divided by two, and we get an integer once again. So this function in c is an integer for every integer x. And this isn't so much the case for d, although it looks very similar. Because if x is odd, then we get an odd number plus even plus odd, divided by four. And while odd and odd will combine to make even, and the numerator on the whole will be even, that doesn't guarantee divisibility by 4. We might end, we might end, end up uh, having something like 34 divided by 4, which is not an integer. So since none of these three can be the correct answer because they don't even satisfy the first part of the if statement, and one of these has to be a good counterexample, then C must be our correct answer. We eliminated all the others. Of course, we can double check, we can differentiate that function, so here it is, differentiated, and we can see that it already fails for, say, x equals 2. We are going to get integers from here, because they're all going to be even numbers, plus 1 half. So this function f of x shows us that even though a function is, in fact, such that for every integer uh, x it has an integer value, it must not be the, always the case, and it isn't for this function, that the derivative does the same. So this is a valid counterexample.